All right, we rolling, man. Hold on. All right, all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wabrakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like. Pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well, including you men who may not be teachers and prophets, to you women and children also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel, none of this would even be possible, okay? So, with all the men that you see coming out here doing this, a lot of people still question, well, how can you guys say that you're the biblical Israelites? Who's to know who the Israelites are today? You guys don't have scientific proof. You can't go in your genetic background and pull out that Moses was one of your, your cousins or your uncle or grandfather. You can't prove that you're related to the Messiah, okay? Well, we can prove it, and we prove it through the scriptures over and over again. And it's beautiful because this truth is compared to a beautiful song. And a beautiful song is something that you hear over and over again. I know when I like a song, I play it all the time. And then there may be times I kind of go away from playing it, but eventually I'm led back to that song again because the song is just that beautiful. So the same with this truth, we hit you over the head over and over again. And whether or not you believe it, that's not the point. The point is, the Heavenly Father basically has us out here being insane, which is to basically do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, except we don't expect results from this world. We're doing this for the elect, for the nation of Israel, but ultimately we're doing it for the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, before any anything else. So if nobody sees what we're doing, if no one wants to acknowledge what we're doing, Let's say the whole world hated us, even brothers within the elect. If the Heavenly Father justifies us, that's all that matters, man. Okay, we out here for the elect. So let's jump into the scriptures. Let's jump to uh, uh, Romans 8 and 16. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Now you have to ask yourself, what spirit is that? What spirit is that referring to? Because that's a broad statement. The spirit bears witness with our spirit. You have the spirit of women. You have the spirit of men. You have the spirit of this world. You have the spirit of animal. What spirit is it referring to? Okay, the spirit that it's referring to is the scriptures. Uh, we'll touch back on that. Let's jump to uh, John 6 and 63. This is the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. And the word quickeneth means uh, to make alive. So the spirit makes you alive. Because before you receive the spirit, we're just going to uh, go into what that is. Before you receive the spirit, you're basically dead. We're made alive again through the spirit. We have a spirit within us already. That's what keeps your body going. Once that spirit leaves your body, your body is dead. But you also have another spirit that feeds your spirit. Okay, go ahead. Ock. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. Profiteth nothing. The, the flesh doesn't profit anything. You'll eat, and guess what? A little bit of time goes by, you're hungry all over again. You can chug a whole gallon of water, feel like your stomach gonna burst at one setting. Time gonna go by, you're gonna be thirsty all over again. If you work out, any brothers who work out, you know that when you hit the gym, you get to look and swole. Let's say you take a few days out the gym. Your body look like you ain't even been working out. It kinda goes back to shrink mode. Any man who works out, who works out, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying because the body is vain, man. All right? Your flesh will have you lusting after things, not even just women, but lusting after things that may not necessarily benefit you or is expedient for you. Things that can 
you know, in the end, get you caught up in something that you shouldn't be, that, that you don't want to be a part of and you shouldn't have been a part of. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and the spirit, it's like, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that Yahweh Shai speaks to us are spirit and life. And he left his words within the scriptures, man. So we know that we're the Israelites because the spirit, which is the word, bears witness with our spirit that we are the Israelites. That's why when you go to the curses in Deuteronomy, that's all part of the spirit. Those curses line up with us completely. Not only that, the simple fact that no other nation in earth is doing what we're doing. The Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans and the confusion of faith are the only ones out here prophesying and bringing out the Bible. Why is that? Well, that's prophecy as well because the scriptures tell you that uh, he will not give his glory to another and it also tells you how the wicked, they won't understand. Okay, go ahead. Ab. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And guess what? When this body dies, when this body gets changed, you know what's going to endure? The words of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, billions of years from now, when, when this body gets done away with, doesn't exist no more, that word that we're bringing out, the word right now that we're bringing out is still going to be here. It's still going to endure. And it's not, not only is it going to endure, it's going to be the law of the whole universe, man. Okay? So right now, you might look at things according to what the flesh is uh, telling you to do, which is basically the things of this world. The world is thinking about right now. They're not looking at later on. But all this is going to be done away with. And if you think about that, that shouldn't make you want to stay here. That should put you in the mentality of hasting in the day, knowing that, well, no matter what you gain here, what's the point of one day? You're not even going to have it. You can hold on to it as long as you want, but you know eventually it's going to be done away with. The scriptures tell you that, you know, when the missiles drop, that everything here in Babylon is going to be dissolved. All right, so let's touch back on uh, Romans 8 and 16 now. So now we understand what the spirit is. And the scriptures tell you, you know, you got to bring out these precepts here a little and there a little. You can read it like it's a book from Genesis to Revelation, but really it's meant to be broken down by going to one scripture that you might have to skip three, four chapters, 50 chapters, a whole book, whatever, you know, but that's how you put the scriptures together. That's how you know this book is like no other book. Many people will say, well, man wrote that book. Well, there's no other book where it's like a puzzle that you have to piece together. Yes. How the Most High, Yahweh Ba Shami Yahweh Shai made this book is incredible. Yes. And how we bring it out, how we jump from one place to another, it's amazing. Okay, go ahead, Ar. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Spirit, which is the Scriptures, the words of Yahweh Shai, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Let's stay in that same book. Uh, go to Romans 2 and 14. <clears throat> this is the book of Romans, chapter 2, and verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. So the Gentiles, we were that same breed of people at one time. We were Gentiles. We were walking according to the customs of this world. But even though we were Gentiles, there were certain things that we just wouldn't do because we're Israelites, okay? And then there may have been things that you did, but when you did it, you was like, hell no, nah, I ain't doing that again because it felt off. Like for example, back in the world, you may not have uh, been into popping a woman while she's on her uh while, while she's on her cycle well it's in the scriptures that you're not supposed to do that so naturally that law is in you showing you that the spirit within you is revealing that you're an israelite if you look at the uh austerity of our people when you see our people get roused up yelling screaming they could be yelling at each other man but just seeing that anger and and the uh the masculinity that gets amped up when you see a Negro man angry or a Latino man angry, 
Well, they're sons of the Heavenly Father. Who do you think gave them that spirit, that rah-rah spirit? That so reminds me uh, of last week, last week's lesson. Because that woman, well, I can, I'm going to call her a girl because she obviously, well, either way it goes, woman, female, all upset over a word, didn't use wisdom, and then you call somebody else down here like you were going to get a different result because he showed up because he was big. No, you're dealing with the men of the most high. We're austere men. We didn't change what we said, stuck to what we said, said it to them, and no different result. Y'all still did, walked did, away. And she also was digging the masculine energy. And, and see, one thing about that with women, women envy that. And that's why they try to mimic it, because not only do they envy it, they're attracted to it. But a woman's pride is not to tell you what she likes. Yep. And she you know? was with a whole system. Yeah, exactly. If he if he would have been if he's a real man and you felt some type of way he should have approached us. I'm not gonna call no other man to come take care of a bit an issue with the deal with my woman. That's yeah. my woman, not someone else. And when we tried to speak like that, he said something on the lines of, "Well, she's a big girl," and that's when I said to him, "She ain't got no respect for you, man." Yep. And she tried to make it seem like she did, but in her spirit, I saw it through her soul, man. She didn't have respect for him. She was looking at him like, yeah, I'm with you for right now. But as soon as something better comes around, or what she thinks is better. And you said that too. She gonna hop on to the next thing. And even after I said that, man, I, I just, I felt her spirit, man. She was in that adulterous spirit. Really, she was choosing, because she saw two men who was different than any other man. And see, one thing about women, they're used to getting men to bow down and do what they say. So when you're doing something different, women see that, man. They, they, you have to be different to attract women anyway. So when you have a masculine spirit, that's different from most men that they come around. Most men, man, I'm telling you, these women have liberty to do what they want to do. So when her spirit, her spirit was like, yeah, that, that's, that's hot. That's sexy. But the devil, the demons within her was having her on that bullshit, man. And see, a lot of these women, the most high got them blocked from us, man. You see, deep down in their spirit, they, they probably want to choose up, but the Most High got that spirit to keep them away from us. Because the scriptures tell you that a wicked woman's given to a wicked man. Yep. So if she's wicked, if the Most High has favor for you, he's not going to give her over to you to give you that headache. Go ahead, Ox. Again, this is the book of Romans, chapter 2, and verse 14. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Why is that? Because they're the Israelites. The fact that our people in the world, there's things that they just don't do, and it goes back to the law, and they don't even know it. There's things that they do that go back to the law, and they don't even know it, you know? But our people are still wicked as hell, man. The scriptures tell you how, you know, Jake has overpassed the deeds of the wicked. And according to the scriptures, uh, the wicked is Esau, spiritual, because that number 10 across the street, where that parking space is, and then that 4-4 on the car, that's 10, that's 1-4-4 four, four right there. I see. So the most high, you know, how he does things is beautiful, man. I've, I've been seeing that number everywhere, man. And then, let me tell you this. You know how, when we used to come out here in the evenings, it'd be a little later, the sun's down, and now even if and i i do this uh, a couple i've been doing this a number of times i'm driving down here yeah. through, through downtown and it'd be the same time that we used to teach and we used to see the chariots every time we out here teaching yes sir don't see it unless we bruh i look up it ain't there angels is watching us they say they always watch you better get to work yeah man that's all that matters is when we watching what, what you gonna be doing you gonna be slacking off or you gonna be doing the work it's a beautiful thing yeah it really is man for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So seeing that you're an Israelite by nature, you can't say you're an Israelite based off of, oh, I believe in that book. No, you don't. Because the second we tell you that the one you call Christ was a so-called black man, his name's Yahweh Shai, you want to question that. You can't understand that. You can't grasp that because there's a good chance that you're a heathen. 
or you're just a two-third Jake that ain't meant to wake up. But either way it goes, the heathen, they're not going to fully open up to this truth, man. They might say, oh, yeah, I believe you guys are the Israelites, but we're going to be in the kingdom right along with you, buddy. There's always some loophole with these people, man. Even if they come off humble and they acknowledge you, oh, yeah, I believe you're from the tribe of Judah and all that. But then they'll say something that just totally, you know, hits you with a left, man. Like totally left field. Like where'd that come from? Yeah, throw the spirit off. Because that's how they move. But our people naturally are going to do things according to the law without even knowing it. These devils, they ain't doing that, man. Esau, I ain't trying to get nasty, man, but Esau, I mean, they'll go down on their woman while she's on her cycle. Yeah. Because they like, you know, a lot of them like blood, man. A lot of them will eat their uh, steak. Their steak with blood coming out. Okay? And if you got Jake doing that, you know they was raised up around some heathens but ultimately a lot of jake ain't really doing that man most jake want they steak done. Well done you know what i'm saying it don't even make sense to even see jake doing that because that's just bugged out i mean our people have gotten to the level where there are things that we're doing today that we weren't doing 15 years ago you got a lot of jake atheists now you know back in the day a lot of jake claimed to believe in god now jake just flat out making himself a god you know and making women a god making their, their lifestyle or their, their money a God. But at one time, Jake would go to church, as wicked as it was, go to church on Sunday, you know, but they still had that that uh, that uh spirit of thinking they're serving the Lord, although they weren't. Now Jake's just like, to hell with the Bible, to hell with, with who you say God is. God is who I say he is. If he's a, a female, well, that's what I believe. If I believe he's a, he's a, a toad, that, that's what I think. That's the new age, Jake. But ultimately, though, Jake still has it in them where they show signs that they're Israelites in different ways, man. Uh, go ahead, Doc. Matter of fact, let's touch on you. You got that Isaiah uh, 46 3. Okay. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, and verse 3. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. So as soon as you come out of your mother, you're an Israelite. So that should tell you right there, to be an Israelite is not a religion, as some may call it. Oh yeah, I've heard about you black Hebrew Israelites. I heard about that religion. I saw that on the news. Yeah, I saw that on the news. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. Because the second that we come out of our mother's womb, the second we come out the matrix, we're Israelites, okay? And all the house of Israel, including the remnant, the remnant being the rest of the elect outside of America, okay, women, children, because it's not gonna be all men. But guess what? When you're an Israelite, you was already an Israelite before you came to the truth. You didn't come to the truth and then suddenly become an Israelite. It's just now, your, your mind is opened up to a to a higher level of understanding of who you are, man. Now you finally see things for what it is. Now you're having spiritual attacks that wouldn't happen the same way back in the world. You know, certain things that you see now, it offends you, but back in the world it didn't offend you because you were filthy. You were just like everyone else. Now, the, you know, the little things get under your skin that Esau set up man because you see things according to how the Lord sees it matter of fact uh let's hold that go to um Ecclesiastes 1 and 18 yeah this is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 18 for in much wisdom is much grief and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So that's, you know, basically that's self-explanatory. But look, you're seeing things the way that the Heavenly Father sees things. So a lot of times the people of this world, the things of this world get under your skin. But when you were in the world, when we were in the world, when we were living after the manner of these heathen, thinking about adultery, wasn't a big deal as long as it wasn't your woman getting hit you know oh it ain't it ain't me better him than me 
you know, back in the world, you might be a Jake. You don't like to work. I, I don't like working. I'm trying to get it this way or that way. Really, you're just a lazy nigga. Yep. You're, you're unresponsible. Okay? These different attributes that we had in the world, when we come to this truth, we change. And it causes a heaviness to come upon you. Because now you have all this opposition that not only is it coming against you, you're, you're ultimately aware of it. You feel it. You know, it's so thick, you can cut it with a plastic butter knife, man. Or so thin, really, because it's, it's not thick. It's so thick, you cut it with something sharp, but it's so thin, you can cut it with a plastic butter knife. Because, see, the, the situation we're in, it's like we've been marinating in it for so long, parts of it feels okay. But then there's other parts of you, which is your spirit, you get offended, man. You see a woman, she be looking hella good, but then there's another part of you that's offended. You're like, damn, she looking good, but then the other part of you, like, man, she probably got a man. Exact same thing. You know, there's probably something wrong with her. She probably got, you know, issues. She probably a big hoe. So it's like, you know, this world, man, we really can't be happy here. But when we were living after the manner of the Gentiles, we were still doing things that show we were Israelites before even acknowledging that we were Israelites, before we even knew it. There were just things that were in us, man. Jake had that zeal back in the world a lot of times. Jake talk about how they believe in God, but they doing all sorts of evil out here, man. Go ahead. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. And that's how you know Yahweh Shai was walking around full of grief. Because none of us had the knowledge that he had, man. So he carried all that weight on his shoulder because they say ignorance is bliss. That's not true, man. Ignorance ain't bliss because when you don't know something, that can destroy you. You know, some people, they say, well, if you don't know, it ain't going to hurt you. Well, if you don't know, you can't be prepared. Okay? The Heavenly Father gave us the word. We're prepared. We see what's happening. And it irritates you because now you know. Now you understand your life is more than just going to work. Your life is more than seeing things and saying, oh, I can't wait until I can get this. And having these desires and you, you ain't obtaining your desires. Life is more than having hand-me-down women. Life is more than having hand-me-down vehicles. A, a hand-me-down home that somebody else has lived in. Multiple people have lived in. And here you come paying rent. Everything here is used up, man. So when you see things for what it is, it irritates you, man. But that's a part of growing in this truth and it also shows the spirit in you is an Israelite man because only an Israelite will be offended at this matter most people they're not going to be offended because they're of the world Walk around the that's right man you you taking a dump okay you're not gonna smell it you just you chilling man but somebody else come around you who ain't uh doing what you're doing they gonna smell that and they gonna get offended man you people you all are just marinating in your wickedness and you don't even smell it. You don't you don't see it. You don't even care. Okay? Go ahead. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. And that's just truth, man. So now let's touch back on Isaiah 46 and 3. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, and verse 3. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Born from the belly, carried by the womb, man. So when we come out of our mother, when we're delivered into the hands of the physician, the doctor, okay, we're, we're already an Israelite. Even before you hear the word, the spirit within you is an Israelite. The Heavenly Father placed that spirit in you. Because to be an Israelite is not a fleshly matter. That's why it's not about what you look like. You're going to have Israelites from the tribe of Judah with blonde hair and blue eyes, man. And a lot of you, you're going to see that as, oh, that, that's of the devil. There's no way. But then at the same time, you'll have the other Israelites who will say, it's not about all Israel. It's all about Israel and the heathen joining with us no. and holding hands. It's either... They can't look like the other nations or they coming into the kingdom with us, these heathen. There's, there's never a straight shot with you wicked people, man. But that also shows you Israelites because uh, the scripture says that the Lord's people is a rebellious people. It's a rebellious house. 
And when, uh, who was that? When Ezekiel was going out there to prophesy, man, he was dealing with a lot of just rebellious ass Jake. But really, all the prophets had to go through that. Moses, okay, you had uh, Aaron had to go through it. You had Jeremiah, he had to go through it. Matter of fact, touch on uh, Jeremiah 18 and uh, 18. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, and verse 18. Then said they, come let us devise devices against Jeremiah. They being you wicked Israelites. The spirit within you Israelites, man, although you're the Lord's people, the fact that y'all wicked as hell, y'all rebellious, that's another uh, fact. That's a true sign that you're the Lord's people, man. Go ahead. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. And why does it say smite him with the tongue? They were talking mad booyaka. Okay? They were going hard on Jeremiah, man. To the point like, you know, naturally you'd want to do something to somebody, man. If you got somebody speaking to you a certain way, disrespecting you, and all you're doing is trying to help them, that's offensive. Because it's not like Jeremiah was the villain in the situation. Here it is, he of the righteous, he doing what the Lord want, and people looking at him like, man, this dude crazy. Don't, don't nobody want to listen to him? Man, clown that nigga. Clown his shoes. Clown his garment. Just, just talk bad about him. To hell with him. Don't listen to that guy. He a loser. And he doing what the Heavenly Father, who made all you... You rebellious ass Israelites, man. Not only made you, foreknew you, before he made you what you was gonna do, what you was gonna be, how things were gonna turn out. The same one that we serve that does all that, you hate him, man. And, and the proof is that if we do what he asks and you hate us for it, which shows you hate him because we didn't make this. We didn't uh, write down the scriptures for our own will and say, hey, you know what? Let's write down this and write down that. Take that out and add this. But make sure we leave this because it makes us look good. Exactly. We're going to reprint all that. No, man. We was given the word and we giving it to you whole, man. Go ahead, Ozzy. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priests, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his word. <laughs> That's what Jake do, man. Don't listen to that guy. Yep. Don't nobody want to hear what you got to say, man. You don't know shit. You can't tell me nothing. I got more than you. How can you tell me anything? Yeah. So that was back in his day. It's 2021 now. But so they you still know, saying it. You know everybody like to hell with us now if they were saying that about Jeremiah then. So we in a, a far more evil time, man. That's why a lot of people, man, when they look at us, they like, these guys is crazy. These, these guys is cuckoo, man. Mm -hmm. these, these guys must be off the rocker. But we clearly ain't that crazy. You know, brothers come out here, man. We say things that are that are very much, uh, on, not only on point, it's, it's straight to the point. We ain't cutting no edges. We hitting you with stuff that you can literally see for yourself, man. You can look it up in the scriptures. You can go online type in stuff the news will show things that we're talking about okay the proof is out here man a lot of you get offended because we get on the women articles have have come out about how 50 percent of women have side men articles have come out how 70 percent of divorces are based on women so the things that we bring out people will be like man don't listen to him don't listen to those guys they're crazy they did the same thing to jeremiah go ahead Art. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise. Devise devices, they're trying to find ways to kill him, man, trying to set him up, go ahead. Nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue. Take it to, uh, take it to 21. And let us not give heed to any of his words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me shall evil be recompensed for good for they have digged a pit for my soul remember that i stood before thee to speak good for them so remember 
We're in the same lot as Jeremiah. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Remember, we come out here to speak good for our people. And most of these people, they speak ill of us. Man, we ain't did nothing wrong to them. We ain't smacked their mama. Okay? The only thing we're doing is bringing out the scriptures according to how you want us to bring it out, Lord. And now we looked at as, as Joker to Batman. Okay? But that's all right. Because we'll be the bad guy. Because really, you people are the villains. But to the villain, the good guy is the villain. All right? And ultimately, Yahweh Ba Shemiah was shy. Just set up a whole bunch of people that he hates, man. And within that, he raised up the few to oppose all that. That's it. It's his way of saying, I want to see a good fight. Just like you might see a kung fu movie and a guy whooping everybody's ass. It wouldn't be interesting if it was just one-on-one -on -one the whole movie. Dude whooping 50, 60, 70 guys. By the end of the movie, he done whooped up 200 dudes, man. <laughs> That's interesting. That's how the Most High has us, man. We out here fighting against... The, the world, literally, man. That saying that Tupac came out with, uh, what would it be? Me against this the world? world? No, yeah. man. That's us. That's that's the elect, man. Pac wasn't against the world. He was of the world. Very All right? Good, you got it. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore, Deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. Did Jeremiah get soft and say, Lord, please make them believe. Lord, I hear him talking stuff, but please be kind to them. They just don't understand. No, he put curses on them, man. Kill those niggas. He said, kill those niggas, kill their children, kill their whole house, Lord. Remember them. Remember that I came out here and did what I'm supposed to do. And remember how they treated me, Lord. Fuck them up, man. Take them out. Please. Please, and I was a righteous man, okay? Go ahead. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows and let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Damn, and that's no joke, man. That and that's exactly what the Lord's been doing to us, man. And Jake's still out here getting slain in battle, man. Battle today, it doesn't have to be an army of men with swords and shield going against another army with swords and shield. It can be a single man with a badge killing another so-called black man. There you go. Called Jake. And then, then, matter of fact, yeah. I just watched a, a, a little short film the other night. It's called, uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, uh, two, uh, two Strangers. Two Strangers, it's on Netflix. God kept, I'm not gonna give it away, but it's basically the shit that happens out here. Cops see you, you don't necessarily have to do nothing. You feel that you don't have to cooperate. One thing goes one way, another goes another, bow, and you're dead. It's over. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy, man. But see, that goes back to the curses which shows we the Israelites. Because the scriptures tell you that we were given over to the curses. As a matter of fact, get Isaiah. It's been a while since I brought this out. Try uh, 23. Actually, it's 43. Uh, 43 and uh, 20, 20, 27. Try Isaiah. Yeah, try that at 27. Yeah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 27. Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. So seeing, you know, everything that's happening to Israel, as much as like, you know, deep down inside, you get mad, like, man, I'm sick of this. I'm tired of, you know, the police gunning our people down and nothing's happening. We've been given over to the curses, man. We're in punishment right now, okay? If I put one of my children in punishment, they're not necessarily supposed to be feeling comfortable. Now, I can make their situation comfortable, and the Lord kind of did that for us. It's damn near a comfortable captivity because you can go home, you know, chill on your couch, kick your feet back, you know, eat some pizza or whatever you like to do, call a woman over, call some women over, call, call your, your brothers over, you know what I'm saying, have some drinks, chill out. You know, there's things that you can do that we damn sure wasn't doing when we were forced here on them slave boats 
or when the uh, Northern Kingdom was conquered by Cristobal Colon, man, when he was commissioned uh, to come here, which was the beginning of the New Age era, so to speak, man. When you look at these situations that came upon us, that shows you once again where the Israelites, because we were given over to the curses. So it's only right that we're not comfortable, but yet our captivity has some comfort to it, which is the liberty that the Lord gave us. Why would okay? It's not, it's not comfortability. It's just not going to leave you without some mercy. That's what it's, 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 it's still somewhat comfortable because think about it, man. Like you can eat a, a big jug of ice cream. Yeah. You know, you be, you be chilling back. You got a couple days off. Yeah. You know, you're eating on some ice cream, but you ain't got to worry about, you know, somebody putting a whip on your back because of what you doing? You're supposed yeah. to be out here in the field yep. with no break. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Just getting the whoop lash, whether it's snowing, whether the sun's out, you know, your wife getting raped in front of you. You know, we in a time where, yes, obvious we're still in slavery. Yeah, that's but, that but was my Lord, main point. Matter of fact, let's get that in, uh, I think that's for Ruth 3 and 8. Or Deuteronomy 2, but yeah. Book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. So we are yet this day, and yes, even this day in 2021, we are still in captivity. The fact that we're subject to payments shows that you're in captivity, man. That alone just shows we're not free. But guess what? The Lord has it to where even a lot of these heathen, they got to make payments and different things too. And then they're going into slavery in the kingdom. That gives you comfort. Although, yeah, we're in our captivity. We're in captivity. And we look over and some of these heathen are right alongside with us. And they ain't got nothing to look forward to, but you do, man. Get my ass whooping out the way now. Yeah, getting your ass whooping out the way now. That's the best way to do it. If you waiting to be the last, you you hearing everybody else scream, but it's in the back of your mind. Damn, eventually that's gonna be me. Now you just you uh, dwelling upon it, man. Instead of just getting it out the way. All right. So yeah, we getting our asses whipped, but again, that shows you who the Israelites are. It doesn't have to be some deep breakdown or some deep mysterious. Uh, object found in Egypt or Israel that shows the Negroes or Israelites. Man, the, the Most High gave us the Bible, man. And there's also, you know, other things that show where the Israelites too. Carnal things at that, man. All right? And it's coming out all the time. There's hella stuff on Gad showing that Gad are Israelites especially, man. I think out of all the tribes, Gad has the most that shows they're the Israelites. So a lot of you saying, oh, the natives ain't Israelites, the uh, all Israelites are all Negroes, or whatever the case, you're stupid, man. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet in this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. We'll bring out couple more times running short uh jump up a scripture to root four and six this is the book of baruch chapter four verse six yea were sold so like he were sold to the nations not for your destruction but because ye moved to god so like ye moved god to wrath ye so the only reason why we were sold to our enemies it wasn't because the lord was like you know what i'm done I'm going to do away with the Israelites. They're going to be extinct. Now I'm just going to go on with my life and leave the world to their wickedness. They can do what they want. They're free to marry who they want to marry. The law is void. But then they'll pull out certain commandments. Well, doesn't the scripture say to love thy neighbor? Yeah, it does. 
it was talking to the Israelites and also that's a law. So how are you gonna say the law is done away with and then try to bring up an excuse? Like, well, it says to love your neighbor, but you're saying I'm going into slavery. Well, you're saying the law is done away with and you're telling me to love my neighbor, which is it? Go ahead, Ock. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved God to wrath. You were delivered unto the enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. There you go. We pissed off the Lord, man. So he did this as punishment, not because he wanted to do away with us or start over again. Okay? Uh, Malachi 3 and 6. But because he was moved to anger. You know how many times he's given us, man? And he uh, got to the point where it's like, you know what? Okay. Now I'm going to whoop y'all's ass for real and I'm going to turn away for a while. And now we're finally coming back to a point where the Lord is just now again, out of all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, man, that he's just been angry towards us, not listening to us, not giving us this knowledge, just having us down here lost, man. We don't know shit. That was his anger towards us. The reason why we're in the truth and we're bringing out the word is because his mercy is being shown. That anger is still there. That's why we that's why we still go through things. Because he's still angry at us. But through his mercy, which is what the elect is going to receive, he gives you this word, which is that life. Okay? Because you being an Israelite, you got to understand, man, you're different from everybody else in this world. You were set up in this world to be different. You were set up in this world to oppose it. This whole life you're living was a test from the Lord to see how you're going to live it. So when you report back to him, okay, there's going to be some exp or some explanation. You did this. You did that. You did this. And you're going to know in your spirit whether or not you qualified or in your spirit, damn, damn, I don't know why I did that. Why did I do that? Dang, that was stupid. But you don't want to feel like that, man. The Lord gives you this word. You're given opportunity to clean yourself up, man. He was angry, so angry that he said, you know what? I'm going to allow Esau to rape your women. I'm going to allow Esau to rape you. Okay? And I don't believe the Lord allowed the elect men to be raped by Esau. That's my personal belief. I believe that was for the rest of Jake, man. A lot of you, Jake, who were back in Egypt committing sodomy, committing sodomy back during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah with different men. Okay, I believe the Lord put those kind of judgments on you, Jake. But nevertheless, we all were in slavery. We all were going through it, man. And that was the Lord saying, right now, I'm getting all y'all, man, as a whole. I don't care if you're the elect or not. I'm hitting all y'all. But the Lord still made it to where he gave us the word. My anger is, is being pacified by seeing you do the right thing and because I called you from the beginning. I knew before all of this, I was going to have mercy on you, if you be of those men. Go ahead. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 3, and verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So although we were sold into slavery, we're not done away with, man. We weren't sold into slavery to be destroyed. When you go into Deuteronomy, it tells you when the curse is that we have a yoke around our neck till we be destroyed. That wasn't speaking of us being destroyed in the sense of not existing. It was speaking of us in a sense of knowledge. That's why when you go to uh, Hosea 4 and 6, you don't got to get it unless you want to. But uh, Hosea 4 and 6 tells you that we are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Matter of fact, yeah, grab it. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Yeah, take it to like 6. All right. This is the book of Hosea. Yeah. Chapter 4. Verse 6. We got like four minutes on the clock. Roughly four to seven minutes. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. And a lot of men, they don't want their children to be hurt. You got, you got men out there who are, you know, pieces of shit. They might not care. But the men who care about their children... You don't want to see nothing happen to your children. Nope. But if you didn't want nothing to happen to your children, you serve the Lord, man. If you really loved your children, I did a video about five years ago. And it was something on the lines of, if you love your children, do the work. 
You claim to love your wife, do the work. You want to see them get delivered? Okay, ultimately, everybody has to answer for their own sin. But you have a far more greater chance of the Lord favoring you by doing what he asked you to do, man. Okay? But you out here running amok, being crazy, the Lord said, you know what? I'm going to forget you and your children, man. Matter of fact, you ain't going to be no priest to me. Give me those jewels. Give me that crown. Give me that staff. You ain't nothing right now. Matter of fact, that's like you taking your woman and she got all these nice clothes and these nice purses, nice shoes. You snatch all that from her. Like, okay, since you want to do this and do that, you're not going to be my bitch no more. Don't call my phone. Give me all that. You snatch it, push her out on the street, man. Even in the book of, I think it's Ezekiel, it tells you how the Lord basically uh, compared us to a woman. Speaking of the Israelite man, he compared us to a woman. He stripped us naked in front of all of our lovers and basically told us to dance in front of all of, all of our lovers, the same ones we committed adultery with. Imagine you doing that to your woman. If you had a woman who committed adultery against you, you called up all her men that she was committing adultery on you with. You told them to meet up somewhere. Here they are lined up, seven, eight men. You take her, snatch all the clothes off of her, throw her in front of all these different men and tell her to dance. Be a hoe now. You want to be a hoe then, be a hoe now. And what she do? She covers up. She's in her shame. Okay, well, that's how the Lord did us, man. He treated us like a bitch who had everything, snatched everything from her, threw her out there naked in her shame, and didn't even feel bad. But at the same time, he did feel bad. It broke his heart, but he didn't feel bad in the sense of, I'm not going to do this to her. No, he whooped that ass, man. But he did feel bad because we broke his heart. Like any man who is in love with a woman who transgresses against him, he going to be hurt, man. I don't want to hear no rah rah shit. Can no bitch hurt me, man? Shut your ass up, man. Okay? Go ahead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Keep on. As they were increased, they so like, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be, and there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. See, the Lord gets us every time, man. We don't escape. That's why our people are at the bottom. How can we be the Israelites, but we at the bottom, man? Why would the Lord choose us? And everybody in my family in prison. Why would the Lord choose us? My my grandma, she she a diabetic. She's been a diabetic since she was in her 20s. Blah, blah, blah. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't believe in that, man. I don't see it. Well, the Lord gave us over to them curses, man. Because we pissed him off. We broke his heart. But he's going to call us back. And that's what's happening right now. And now we're a sign unto you people. Matter of fact, two more. Let's, let's close it with... Uh, Two more. Let's start with Ezekiel 24 and uh, 24. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, verse 24. So, so how do we know we're Israelites? Man, the curses. Let's just keep it simple. The curses alone shows that we're the Israelites. That was the main highlight that gave us a clue on who we were on top of the things that we're doing. You know, prophesying, the prophecies happening. Okay, there's many things that show it, but the curses is a huge... Uh, imprint on how we are the Israelites, man. Go ahead. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, verse 24. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign, according to all that he hath done, shall ye do, and when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. One more time, bro. Thus Ezekiel is a is unto you a sign, according to to all that he hath done shall ye do and when this cometh ye shall know that I am the Lord God Isaiah 8 and 18 we'll close it there so Ezekiel was a sign Ezekiel was a prophet man. we're a sign unto our people 
the fact that we're out here doing this shows that we're the Israelites because the Israelites always came out here and prophesied to their people, man. We're always rejected. We're always looked at as nuts because the scriptures tells you, man, you, you can't be of this world. This is one thing that you can't front with, man. You can perpetrate and do a lot of things in this world and get away with. You can't be in this truth and then think you're going to walk in this world because guess what? God will kill you. Not only will he kill you, people are, are looking at you funny, man. Isn't that that guy that, that teaches the Bible? Why is he snorting cocaine? <laughs> Isn't that that guy that teaches, <laughs> you know, like, for real, bro. Hey, no, I'm serious. serious. It's just that. Yeah, we we've, we've had them. Uh, I, I got, believe in what you guys are saying, but then, yeah, but motherfucker, they, what are you doing? But they live in a wicked life, man. You know, so you can fool the Most High. I mean, not well, the Most he, High. You, you can fool, you can the fool world, man, but you can't you fool, fool the, the Most High. high. He see you, everything yeah, he, you doing, everything, man. So the fact that we're assigned unto you, you people don't take it like that. You take it as, man, these guys again, man. Just drive the car. Don't even look at them, honey. Don't don't look at them. What did I say? I said don't look at them. That's how people look at us. Because like we brought out, I think it was last week or the week before, uh, what Paul said, how we are basically the filth of the world. Not literally. It's not saying we're the filth of the world, literally. It's saying that because of the spirit that's on us, man, it's us against everybody, basically, man. Because nobody understands. Nobody gets it. That's why the scripture says, who who shall rise up against the evildoers? As in, who, who's going to be brave enough to go against all this, man? You know what you're up against? You're against the, the world. So who, who's going to stand up for me and face the world? Although you're not by yourself, I'm going to put you in a position where you feel like you're by yourself. Who's going to do it? The Lord said, you know what? I'm going to choose who's going to do it. That's who's going to do it. The I'll man that I choose. Back to back. Yeah, back straight to up. Back and just yep. That's right, man. Hey. Throwing them blows. Yeah, keep throwing them back to back. Uh, let's read that one more again. Matter of fact, you're on Isaiah now. Yeah. Let's touch on that one, and then we'll close it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 18. Behold, and I, the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel, from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. So, how do we know we're Israelites? Because we're a sign unto our people. How do we know we're a sign unto our people? Because we're doing the exact same thing the prophets of old were doing teaching the word in the open being rejected acting like we ain't hearing shit man that, that's what we always go through every time we we come back to do this we get treated the same way it's just it's a it's a different civilization things are a little different in that aspect the same spirits always come back man and the fact that we're assigned unto you that should show you oh they got to be the israelites who else is doing what they're doing? I don't see Ishmael over there where they are out prophesying, teaching the Bible like the old prophets did. I don't see Esau out here with the with them fake Amalekites out here teaching the Bible, breaking down the scriptures, giving you prophecy. I don't see Moab doing this, man. As many so-called Chinese people there are in the world, you go to China, man, there's an abundance of them. You don't see not one of them out there breaking down the scriptures, wearing garments, being prophetic in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. And if you do see any of these uh, other nations, they're confusion of face, man, which means they're Israelites who have the luck of the other nations. And really, when you go into that, that verse, speaking of the confusion of face, it's not really saying uh, Israelites that look like other nations. When you go into that word confusion, the word there is shame. But really, it's a shame to look like these other nations. And you're going to have our people who have that shameful look on them who look like these other nations. Breaking down the scriptures, man. You're going to see a dude who look like he's from North Korea and Philly or somewhere breaking down the scriptures, and you're going to have idiots scratching their heads still talking about black Hebrew Israelites. We've had plenty of men in this truth who don't even look like your common Negro or, Latin or Latino or Native, and you still have people scoffing saying black Hebrew Israelites because you people... You want to see us fall, man. You want us to be telling lies. You hope that we're lying to you. Yeah. Okay? But the fact that we're out here, this is a sign. This should be enough that we're the Israelites, man. And the Lord, he's the one that's going to further show who the Israelites are. But y'all want to see spectacular things and fireworks and us levitating. 
Those things are going to come. Not time for it now, though. Yeah, it ain't time, man. But in due time. So we'll close it out right there. Hopefully it was edifying. Yeah, time's running out in like 30 seconds. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakwadash, Shalom.